everybody this is Karen welcome back to our channel called our house and in this video we're gonna go over the history behind the man G.A. Henty we're gonna talk about a little bit of his life his body of work and we're even gonna talk about some of the controversy surrounding him today in certain circles and also don't forget I'm gonna announce the giveaway winner of a boy night this is our giveaway for today and I'll be announcing that at the end of this video so stay tuned to see if you won all right, so let's just get started. Okay, so G.A. Henty was born in Trumpington near Cambridge. And the first part of his life, you know, it was really hard. It was really tough on him. He was sick a lot. He was bedridden a lot. So he just read. He just read a ton as a kid uh, because he couldn't do much else. And I think this really uh, helped. I think this really played a factor in who he became as an adult and his storytelling, um, just being so imaginative, probably had a lot to do with this hardship of this early part of his life, being in bed and sick all the time. So that was something I thought was interesting. Now, he developed a wide range of interests that he carried into adulthood. He seemed to be really well-rounded. He attended Westminster School of London and later Gonville and Caius College and also Cambridge which was not an easy school to get into so he got into Cambridge however he did not finish his degree he left early to volunteer with the army hospital at the time the Crimean war was going on so he left to go uh, volunteer with the army hospital and then later he was sent of course to Crimea and while he was there he witnessed some very appalling conditions that the British soldiers had to fight under and so he wrote letters home to his father and he just he wrote such vivid and descriptive letters and this is obviously before how it is today where you know nowadays you can see in real time what's happening in other countries especially during a war and there's all this you know correspondence journalists this was a different time obviously and so these letters really gave people a feel of what was going on at the uh, at the battle scene right what the conditions were they kind of gave an inside look and so his dad receiving these letters thought these were really good these were really great letters i'm sure if i enjoy reading them as often as i get them that other people would as well so he took them down to his local newspaper he showed them the letters and they were interested in printing them and so they did and of course everybody else also enjoyed reading the letters and so these letters printed by the newspaper later on became a job opportunity for him to be a special war correspondent now he shortly before resigning the army as a captain in 1859 he married his wife Elizabeth Funikin, and they went on to have four children. However, sadly, tragically, Elizabeth passed away in 1865 after a long illness. So that's really sad. Now, shortly after her death, Henty began writing articles for the Standard newspaper. And in 1866, that's when the newspaper sent him to be their special kind of war correspondent and they sent him to report on the Austro-Italian War where he met Giuseppe Garibaldi and he went on to cover the 1868 British punitive expedition to Abyssinia and the Franco-Prussian War, the Ashanti War, the Carlist Rebellion in Spain and the Turco-Serbian War. He also witnessed the opening of the Suez Canal and he traveled to Palestine, Russia, and India. So he was very well traveled and had a lot of experience, a lot of life experience. He saw, he witnessed a lot of events, a lot of historical events, a lot of wars, a lot of conflict. He experienced so much in his life and this is obviously going to play into his stories later on. Now. Henty was a strong supporter of the British Empire all his life. Um, his ideas about politics were shaped by writers such as Sir Charles Dyke, Dalk, Dalk, Dilk, Dilk, I think, and Thomas Carlyle. So those were his uh, political influences. Now, Henty once uh, talked about in an interview where his storytelling, um, you know, skills came from and they simply grew out of telling stories to his children after dinner time that's where it all really got started now he wrote his first children's book 
1868 called Out on the Pampas and his main book characters were named after his children. Now the book was published by Griffith and Farron in November 1870 with the title page of 1871. And so this is a fun fact. You know you have a first edition Henty book if the year is printed on the bottom of the title page. So if you see that, that's a good one. That's a first edition. Henty went on to write 122 books, which is just unheard of today. I can't think of many authors in my generation that are writing 122 books. I mean, do you know of one? Please let me know in the comments below, but that's pretty unheard of. That's a lot. That's very ambitious. 122. That's a large volume of work. And most of them were children's books, but he also wrote novels, nonfictions for adults, such as The March to Magdala and those other animals and short stories like The Boy's Own Paper, The Union Jack, which was a weekly uh, weekly boys magazine and so Gia Henty's novels typically revolved around a boy or a young man living in troubled times you know they they were um, heroic characters and occasionally included young ladies as well uh, but they were uniformly intelligent courageous honest resourceful um, a lot of spunk and yet very modest as well and so these virtues in these novels are what has made them popular in Christian circles in general and the Robinson curriculum folks in particular. And these books contain a wide range of worldwide conflicts, right? We have everything from the Punic Wars to more recent conflicts like the Napoleonic Wars and the American Civil War. Now, what was his writing process, thinking process behind, you know, writing all of these books? Well, a lot of them he could draw from his actual experience and so they're very descriptive with uh, people and places and events he's drawing from what he experienced but even when he wrote books about events that he did not live through himself he was very diligent in researching them you know he would go to the library or he would order books on the topics and he just um, really educated himself on the time period so that he could make it sound just like his books where he did experience those events and he did a really great job in doing that so obviously he led a very full life and on november 16 1902 he died aboard his yacht uh, in waymorth harbor dorset and so he left his last novel unfinished it's called by conduct and courage which later on his son finished captain cg henty now, and he is buried in the Brompton Cemetery in London. In the late 1990s, these books kind of, you know, started to make a popular comeback. They were being reprinted by a number of American publishers, such as Polygot Press, Preston Speed, Lost Classic Books. And so you can find reprints of all of Henty's work. This is the Catabubasties, which is actually the first book if you look at them in chronological order as far as time history this is the first book this is ancient egypt and so i will put a link in the description below where you can see that list okay so you could buy like this as a reprint paperback you know very affordable or you could um like me go to use antique bookstores special bookstores and try to find your own hard copies this one has an inscription from Christmas 1905. And I actually read this on Wikipedia. It said, one such publisher and major modern advocate of Henty is the American scientist homeschool uh, curriculum publisher and one-time political candidate, Arthur B. Robinson, who promotes Henty's book as a supplement to his self-teaching homeschool curriculum. So you might be wondering, what is all the hype with the Henty books? Why do uh, Robinson families you know, like it so much and promote it so much? Well, it's because it's a great historical supplement. The um, RC curriculum covers reading, writing, and arithmetic. It focuses heavy on those three R's. And so a lot of people are like, well, what about history? What about going through a timeline with your children? We believe this is one of the best ways is through living books, through this great um, historical fiction. It's great to read aloud to your children. Uh, probably ages 12 and up, they can read it on their own. And it's just a great way to do history. And so that's why it's really popular with RC families. 
Now, let's talk a little bit about the controversy uh, regarding some of his books. Now, even during his lifetime when he was alive, Henty's work was considered by some contentious. Uh, some Victorian writers accused his novels of being xenophobic towards non-British people and objected his glorification of the British imperialism. Um, some books such as True to the Old Flag, 1885, and uh, The American War of Independence, he favored the loyalist side, okay? He uh, was a British supporter, obviously. So that doesn't really bother me. I understand where he grew up, right? Where he was born, where he, was, where he grew up, what his influences were were and so i understand if anything i just think they're great opportunities to discuss these things with my children now that doesn't mean i'm just like a free-for-all whatever book you bring in here let's talk about it i want to focus on whatsoever things are pure and true and lovely and uh, you know those things we want to think on totally butchering that verse i'm sorry but these books are morally sound books and so it doesn't bother me to talk a little bit about the politics behind it the historical aspect of it they're still in my opinion really great books and it's out of 122 books you know just to have a few little things like that it's no big deal i think let me know in the comments below if you feel differently uh, also henty's novel with lee in virginia has a protagonist who fights on the side of the aristocratic confederacy side against the union and so one very outspoken critic uh was commentator rachel maddow maddow who called henty's writing spectacularly racist i could not care less what rachel maddow thinks <laughs> okay she's I, I don't care what she thinks however I do care about what you think you out there so you let me know in the comments below how do you feel about this you know should we throw the baby out with the bath water um, this is very controversial today we have we're living in a time where you know Laura Ingle Wilder her award was name changed it was you know it was named after her they changed it because of some of the things she wrote in her books there's also things like huckleberry finn you know that are controversial uncle remus is probably another book um, in the rc list that people might consider controversial you know the, the rc list is built on classics so these things are gonna be there and um, you know we can't should we try to erase it or let them be there as historical uh, context would you not let your children read these books would you just skip the ones that maybe said things that you didn't like or just discount the whole series as a whole you're not gonna offend me leave a comment below and really quick i wanted to mention my favorite website where you can purchase j henty books because it could be a little bit hard to find you know finding them online hunting them down hunting them down at a antique bookstore it can be a challenge so there is a website called robinsonbooks.com, which I love, especially if you're not doing the Robinson curriculum, but you're kind of curious and um, kind of want to maybe purchase a few things. You can do so from that website and they have these GA Henty sets that are awesome. They have audiobook sets, they have paperback sets, they have hardback sets and the full complete set that is like one of my dream purchases there's no way i can convince my husband of it probably uh, but either hardback or paperback i'm not picky those sets are really impressive that is one of my dream purchases maybe one day so you could check it out but you don't have to purchase the whole set you can purchase smaller sets they have it all there all right so now let's move on to the giveaway winner who is gonna win i'm gonna switch over to my computer now and do a random generator to see who is the winner if you're the winner please email me at this address here below email me right away so that i can ship your book to you as soon as possible thank you so much to everybody who participated in the giveaway i really appreciate everybody commenting and stay tuned next week for new videos i'll be doing the follow-up video for the flashcards, how i'm storing them organizing them all that good stuff so i'll see you in the next video and now let's move on to the giveaway winner
right, Georgia Stapleton, you are the winner. Georgia, you won. Please email me or leave me a comment below so I can send you your book. Congratulations.